people seek restoration when their possessions are taken and relationships are broken? How does one cope with the loss of what is truly important? The writer of Lamentations trusted that God would reestablish a relationship with Israel. The book of Lamentations is a Hebrew poem expressing the destruction of Jerusalem in 587 BC by the Babylonians. Jeremiah, the prophet, is believed to be the author. The book is entirely poetical, consisting of five poems, where the verses are arranged in Hebrew alphabetical order, each verse starting with the next letter of the alphabet. Only Lamentations chapter 5 is not presented in alphabetical acrostic, as in the other chapters. Instead, it is a prayer that was offered by the lamenting remnant. And that brings us to our key verse for today, which reads, Turn thou us unto thee, O Lord, and we shall be turned, renew our days as of old. Lamentations chapter 5, verse 21. The prayer begins by drawing God's attention to the misfortunes that have come upon Judah. The poet, believed to be Jeremiah, is pleading with the Lord to remember the things that they have endured during Jerusalem's fall to the Babylonians. He also makes an appeal to God to observe sorrows resulting from what they have suffered. The word reproach, in Hebrew, kerpa, refers to shame, scorn, and disgrace. This is the same word Nehemiah uses to describe the state of the Jerusalem walls. The poet seems to complain about the retribution of sin. The punishment of the ancestors' sin was visited upon the children. The guilty ones did not even live longer to face the judgment they deserved. This is the way it seems to Jeremiah. This view of retribution of sin is based on Exodus 20, verse 5, where the succeeding generation could bear the consequences of their forefathers' sins up to the third or even fourth generations. In the Mosaic Law, God was dealing with Israel as a corporate body. The usual activities of the city are no longer carried on. The old men are convening at the city gate to discuss matters of the city and make useful decisions for the city life, but they are no longer ruling the city. They are treated with contempt, and they are not consulted. The young men were the expression of the vitality of the city. They were once carrying on with exuberance and joyful life, making music and dancing. This life of music and dance has come to an end. They can rejoice no more, either, because they are being mistreated or they are mourning due to a lot of misfortunes. The prophet admits that the people know the cause of all this devastation. They have sinned. They have disobeyed God and are now reaping the covenant curses, just as they gained the covenant blessings when they properly obeyed the Lord. God promised not to forget nor forsake his people in Deuteronomy 31, which is cited by Hebrews chapter 13. Tough and trying times may come our way, but we should remember that God works everything for our good, as written in Romans chapter 8 verse 28. In his own time, God's faithfulness is continually renewed. Even God's punishment is an expression of his profound love for us. In the meantime, while we may not understand the reason or the purpose of the trying time, we are free to pour our, our hearts before him as Hannah did and as Job did. We cannot grasp God's ways and doings, but we will never forget. He will never forget us and never stop loving us. He will come to us with deliverance and songs of joy. So here's our lesson. Although he feels forsaken by God, Jeremiah still unshakably believes that God is eternal and almighty. He pleads in true penitence for God to show mercy by restoring and renewing his people and their land. Jeremiah strikes a balance between owning the nation's sins, remembering God's love and mercy, and with human limitations, still questioning if God will still reject his pleas. As a community, we have our part for action and inaction as it relates to the status of socioeconomic conditions where we live. We are empowered to make our community safer and more economically sound by working cooperatively, and as in the past, the church must lead the way. Thank you so much for listening and subscribing to iLights. Heavenly Father, fill our hearts with what we truly desire, for who we truly seek is you.